Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and a warm welcome to the first in our sixth series of Doha Debates, coming to you from the Gulf state of Qatar and sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. We face tonight an extraordinarily divisive issue. A Libyan national convicted of Britain's worst terrorist attack was released in August by the Scottish Government on compassionate grounds because he was suffering terminal cancer. But was compassion appropriate in such a case? What signal did it send to those convicted of mass murder? What signal did it send to their victims? The case has generated enormous and bitter controversy, especially in Britain and America, where the release was condemned by President Obama. This is the first time it's been aired in a public forum in the Arab world. So there we have it, Libya's Abdel Basset al-Magrahi, allowed to leave Scotland 21 years after Pan Am Flight 103 was blown up over Lockerbie, killing 270 people, the crime for which he received a penalty of life imprisonment. And your role tonight to decide if letting him go home to die was right or wrong. Our motion, this House deplores the release of the Lockerbie bomber to Libya, and as ever, our panel is deeply divided on the issue. Well, speaking for the motion, Daniel Kavczynski is a Conservative member of the British Parliament and chair of the all-party House of Commons groups for Libya and Saudi Arabia. He's currently writing a book called Seeking Gaddafi. And with him, Guma al-Gamati, who's a frequent critic of the Libyan leader. He's a writer and commentator who spent more than 30 years in the UK and been active in Libyan opposition movements. Against the motion, Mustafa Fatouri, a Libyan professor and political commentator, he lived more than 20 years in the West before returning to the job of MBA director at the Academy of Graduate Studies in Tripoli. And with him, Jim Swire, whose daughter Flora was among the passengers on Pan Am 103 when it was blown up over Scotland. He's campaigned tirelessly for the rights of the victim's relatives and has been to Libya and held direct talks with Colonel Gaddafi. He also visited Abdel Basid al-Magrahi in jail and remains convinced that the truth about the Lockerbie bombing has not yet been told. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. So now let me call first on Daniel Kavczynski to speak for the motion. Well, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I feel passionately about Anglo-Arab relations. I believe, as a British parliamentarian, that the Arab world is extremely important uh, strategically, culturally, and economically for the United Kingdom. That is why I have set up something called the Conservative Arab Network uh, in the House of Commons to campaign on behalf of Anglo-Arab issues. Uh, but this was a crime, the worst atrocity imaginable, uh, that was carried out. And Mr. al Magrahi was convicted in a court of this heinous crime. And that is why I did not want his release to be carried out whilst we have key outstanding issues with Libya. I must tell you that a serving British police officer, a young lady, was shot outside the Libyan embassy 25 years ago. The Metropolitan Police have desperately tried to conclude the investigations into her killer. They've been to Tripoli on three occasions, and yet now the Libyan authorities refuse to allow them to finish their investigations. I have repeatedly asked to see Colonel Gaddafi to bring some of these uh, police officers uh, with me so that the investigations can be f finished, and yet he refuses to see me, and a recent delegation to Libya was postponed. So I must tell you, if we are going to build a long, credible, trusting partnership with Libya, it must be done with mutual respect and part of that is to resolve these outstanding issues. And I will not rest until the killer of PC Yvonne Fletcher, shot by a Libyan diplomat, has been brought to justice. Daniel Kavczynski, thank you very much indeed. You would have held Abdel Basset al-Magrahi hostage for the killing of somebody else. You believe in that sort of thing, do you? Well, I believe that ultimately... Because that's what you're saying. Well, you know, if you don't uh, pursue this case, the case of Yvonne Fletcher, who was shot dead 25 years ago, you can't have your dying man back. So... Well, unfortunately... You're, you're in favour of taking hostages. Though. I'm not... I, what I'm saying is that the Libyans have played very, very tough, and to be fair, and 
to them, they have insisted on their citizen being returned to Libya. They didn't insist, they requested. Well, the negotiations were very protracted, very tough from what I hear. But we equally in the United Kingdom should not be seeking to have hostages, but should be at the same time pressing the case and publicly challenging the Libyans as to why they are obstructing the Metropolitan Police But do you think that holding, uh, holding a dying man behind bars until his last breath